Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is issues of incarceration. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about some of the issues that in many instances will uh, lead to uh, incarceration, uh, Pastor Kevin Walker. Uh, Pastor Walker is the president of an organization called the New Beginnings Organization, which is located in the River Bend Maximum Facility, uh, Security Facility uh, in Nashville, uh, Tennessee. And of course, uh, Reverend Walker, let me uh, welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Well, thank you, Dr. Haney, and I'm glad to be here on this morning. And to tell you how delighted we are to have you uh, with us uh, again, uh, uh, Pastor Walker. As a matter of fact, you've been uh, with us on a number of occasions, oh, and yeah. I'm sure that uh, many of our regular viewers uh, know who you are and know a lot about you. But for those who might not know uh, Pastor Kevin Walker, let's give you an opportunity to uh, talk about your background, your experiences, and some of the uh, things that eventually led you to the president of an organization called the New Beginnings Organization. And then, of course, you might also stipulate that you are not, a, uh, you're not an inmate uh, at uh, <laughs> right. the uh, facility, right. as we might have implied. Oh, go on. Well, yeah. I'm glad you say that, Dr. Haney, because I do want people to know me. I want people to know me in the sense that I'm trying to draw attention to an organization mm -hmm. and to a cause. Um, again, my name is Kelvin Walk. I pastor the Hands of God Christian Outreach Ministries. We're a church located in uh, South Nashville on Gilmore Avenue. I'm also the president of the New Beginners Organization. It's an organization that was founded out there at the River Bend Maximum Security Prison. And the uniqueness of our organization is the fact that it was founded by a group of currently incarcerated inmates and an ex-convict myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what makes our organization unique. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of myself, with educational background. I spent a little time at Tennessee State University back in the mid-70s. At that time, I got uh, strung out on drugs. I became a heroin addict as a result of dealing drugs also, and that led to a life of crime, of course, and eventual e incarceration in the state prison system. Mm -hmm. uh, I got out of the prison system, and uh, of course, my drug, uh, drug usage continued until I got an, into a relationship with the Lord, and that's mm -hmm. basically what turned me around. And that's where I am today. And now I'm out here trying to champion a cause uh, for those that are inside the prison system, trying to deter some of our youth from going in the same direction that I took. And we've band together and we've created this organization called New Beginnings Organization. And it is a positive one. Now, what about this organization, New Beginnings Organization? I think that we've talked about it before, but give uh, us some idea about uh, what you're trying to achieve with this group. Okay, first of all, New Beginnings is an organization of men that have made some bad choices and wrong decisions in life, but now have realized the error of their way mm -hmm. and have made a decision to give back into society in terms of, of helping our youth to, to not go the pathway that we went in terms of developing themselves while in the system and also helping other individuals that are coming into the system mm -hmm. to, for, to develop themselves so that they won't go back out. Our mm -hmm. primary purpose of New Beginnings is really to impact mm -hmm. the recidivism rate, to bring that rate down. That's mm -hmm. what we want to do, to stop people from being reincarcerated mm -hmm. in the system. That's you, what we're doing. So you've got a re revolving door. Talk about that because I think that that's quite interesting, this revolving door concept of, that you talk about all the time. It is, Dr. Haney, because a lot of times people go in and out of the prison system and a lot of people don't understand why is it that they're going in and out of the prison system like that. Mm -hmm. Why are there no programs in place that help individuals that are in the system? There are some programs in place, but there are not enough programs in place. We're, we're determined to be one of those programs that are in place to help people. Mm -hmm. Because what we're finding out, that, and people need to know this also, that a majority of the people that go out and come back into the system, they're coming in on technical uh, parole violation, things such as getting a dirty urine, uh, not maintaining full-time employment, mm -hmm. different stu stuff like that, not reporting on time mm -hmm. or consistently enough, mm -hmm. and they're being violated. It's not because they got new offenses mm -hmm. or anything like mm -hmm. that. And, that's, and that really contributes more so to the revolving door syndrome than any other things. Mm -hmm. And so you've got a large number. I, mean, I would imagine that since uh, you've indicated the importance of this, that it's um, the number is much larger than any of us would, ex any of us outside of the system who might not be familiar with what goes on than we would expect. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, because, see, we think that the people are getting out and they're just getting out and they're running crazy wild and silly and just committing new crimes but the majority of the time that's not the case it's people that are just 
technical violation. Mm -hmm. The parole officer violates them. And a lot of people don't realize the challenges that an individual has to go through mm -hmm. once he gets out of the system. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of those challenges? Some of the challenges, uh, Dr. Haney, in terms of, you take an individual, we were talking about resume preparation in one of our group uh, out there on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got a great resume. You've got all this knowledge and skill. You've learned some computer training and all these things. And you interview with somebody, and the interviewer says to you, well, you know what? You know, you sound great. You look good. Everything is in place. I mean, you're the perfect person for this position, mm -hmm. but I'm sorry. We can't hire you because we don't hire convicted felons. Mm -hmm. Now, here you are. You're faced with a challenge. What do I do? Do I continue to persist on knowing that I can do this stuff, mm -hmm. or do I give up? And, and you got those challenges, and a lot of people don't have enough support system mm -hmm. in place for them to help them meet and deal with those challenges, and a lot of times they'll revert back mm -hmm. to the old way of thinking because mm -hmm. society has, in effect, rejected that mm -hmm. individual mm -hmm. that know that they've labored hard to get themselves in right perspective with mm -hmm. themselves. And, and, and of course, uh, all of this rejection plays a very, very uh, uh, important part in terms of how they see themselves and, and, and the kind of things that they become involved in after that. that Absolutely, because it's easier for somebody that has mm -hmm. not been incarcerated to say, well, just dust yourself off and pick yourself up and go on. Mm -hmm. But when you've been in the system, you've been out of society, then you've been uh, uh, cast a, uh, you're a castaway, you're a mm -hmm. reject, a societal mm -hmm. reject, and then you got to re-enter society mm -hmm. with all these negative things, and what people remember most about anybody is the bad things that you do, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's what we have to face mm -hmm. when we get out. I would imagine, see, it, it, it's quite difficult for many of us to, uh, who have not been in these situations, to uh, understand what it really means uh, to be incarcerated. Certainly we know that uh, you're cut off, you're in jail, but, but explain, I mean, what does that mean to, uh, to be incarcerated in a, in, in a penal system uh, on some major violation? It's, it's absolute and total powerlessness. You have absolutely no power. You know, we take youth tours in, and I ask them, I say, when you walk down through the walkway, did you notice a McDonald's? Did you notice a Captain Diesel? Did you notice any of these fast food restaurants? They said no. I said, that's because they're not there. You know, in here, we have to get up when, we have to get up when they tell you to get up. You got to go, go in your cell when, when they tell you to. Mm -hmm. It's not like you can stay outside late at night and stuff like that. You got to go in when they say go in. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you are totally, you, you lose absolute freedom. It's mm -hmm. gone. You, you don't have those privileges. I mean, at any given Friday, you can, you can know what's going to be on the menu. Mm -hmm. Whatever's on the menu this Friday will be on the menu next, uh, next year on Friday this time, at this same time. It's, it's just that uh, common and uh, that, that's plain in reference to the way they do things. Oh, so. yeah. It's, it's very systematic. Mm -hmm. It's very systematic. You're dealt with as a number. You're not really a human being. You're a number. When I was in there, I was Walker, 84961. Mm -hmm. My first name became Walker. My, first, my, my true first name disappeared. Mm -hmm. My last name became Walker. My last and my, my first name was Walker, and my last name was 84961. Yeah. And that's, and that's how they, you were identified in the Absolutely. whole system throughout the uh, system. Good. Very good. Uh, well, what we'd like to do, and, and of course, uh, I think that we must be coming to uh, the uh, end of this uh, first segment. And of course, when we, when we come back, uh, I don't guess we are. I'm, I'm wondering about how much time that we have. Okay. I don't want to get, become involved in uh, too many more issues. But uh, since we, I, I think, uh, Pastor Walker, since we've sort of, uh, you've sort of demonstrated uh, how uh, powerless individuals are who become incarcerated. Let's look at uh, some of the issues that uh, might bring up incarceration. Why do people go to jail? Why do people go to jail? I, you know, Dr. Haney, I think the first area is important is to look at and a lack of family discipline, I think. Mm -hmm. There's a lack of discipline in the families a lot of time when we should be disciplining children and showing them the consequences for the negative behavior. A lot of time we let it slide by and then as a result, a lot of time people grow up and not realizing, hey, when I do this, that's going to be a consequence to my mm -hmm. action. Now that's not the whole picture, but that's part of the picture. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are other parts of the picture. Uh, I think the number one cause of incarceration is, is greed for, or money. money. Mm -hmm. they want, people want money and mm -hmm. they will use any means necessary to get it. People do all types of things for money. And then mm -hmm. when you couple that with drugs, you mm -hmm. put the drugs, selling the drugs to get the money, mm -hmm. and then the other cause is things like drug addiction. People mm -hmm. becoming addicted to drugs. I mean, when you become addicted to drugs, then it's, it's out the window then. Mm -hmm. and there, nothing matters. Mm -hmm. You're not important. I'm not important. Mama's not important. Nobody's important then mm -hmm. at that time. <coughs> of course, cool. so let me I'll interrupt here, uh, Pastor Walker, for our first commercial break after which we'll come back and we'll uh, talk about some other things. We'll be back with you uh, following this very, very short commercial break. And of course we're talking